Good morning, everyone. This is Kevin Yates, and good afternoon to those of you that are on the East Coast. We're going to go ahead and get started with our program for today, Professional Development Made Easy. First thing I'd like to do is thank you for giving me your time. Uh, I'm hoping that we will provide for you a learning experience that is meaningful, relevant, valuable, and most important, that is actionable. Um, we're going to be focusing today on professional development, giving you some thoughts and ideas, some, some tips, some tools, and some strategies for your professional development planning. Um, we know that there is often the idea that professional development is difficult, um, that it's uh, cumbersome, but I believe that after we spend some time together today and I share with you some thoughts and ideas about professional development, it will be a little bit easier for you to manage and hopefully you'll be able to walk away from today's program with some things that you can do, if you haven't already, to create your own professional development plan. Uh, before we begin, just three quick reminders. Uh, you want to make sure that you're logged into this program with your own laptop or your own desktop. That's the way in which we can make sure that you get credit for participating in this program. Um, if you have a hands-free headset, we highly recommend that you use that as well so as not to disturb those that are around you. And I know that the temptation always exists because it exists for me as well, but we're going to recommend and invite and encourage you to resist the temptation to multitask. Today is going to be very interactive. I'm going to be asking for you to participate with the chat feature. I'm going to be sending some documents to you. We're going to have a few polling questions. So just want to make sure that you don't miss any of that. So, again, I want to invite and encourage you to resist the temptation to multitask. Again, my name is Kevin Yates. Just a little bit about me. Uh, I am from Chicago, born and raised. Um, I've been with Millwood Brown now for about two years. I'll be celebrating my two-year anniversary in a couple of weeks, actually, on June 4th. Um, I work in our Lyle and Chicago offices here in the Midwest. And just a little fun fact about me, I love seafood, and I'll share with you, team. Uh, as they say, there's no shame in my game. I love red lobster. There's, there's nothing wrong with affordable seafood. So that's just a little bit of, a little bit of fun fact about me. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to know who's on the call. I see we've got a lot of people. Um, so here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Use the chat feature, and if you take a look at the panel that's over to the far right in the screen, you'll see where there's the, uh, the, the chat feature. Um, let me know what city you're in, and then share your fun fact with me. Let me know what your favorite food is. So, again, use the chat feature, and let me know what city you're in, and let me know what your favorite food is. All right. Hi, Ian. I'm glad you joined. Let's see, you're a mile, and you like curry and pizza. All right, how about a curry pizza? <laughs> All right, who else we got? Let's see, Colleen is in Norwalk. Hi, Colleen. Thank you for joining. And her favorite food is french fries. All right, I love french fries, too, especially the brown ones. All right, we got Drew in North Carolina. Hey, Drew. Welcome. Glad you joined. Uh, let's see, we got Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. You're in Lyle also, and you like Priscilla hamburgers. Great. All right. All right, we got uh, Elisa. Oh, wow, we got a lot of people in Lyle today. All right. Oh, we got Norwalk and, let's see, more Lyle. All right. Hey, guys, thank you for letting me know where you are um, and what your favorite food is. That's just an example of how I'm going to be using the chat feature today to have a virtual conversation with you so that we're working together. Um, I want to make sure that I increase the opportunity for you to engage and be part of this program, so that's just one of the ways. Uh, that I'm going to be doing that, all right? So let's keep it going. Um, you've already told me where you are and what your favorite food is. So, again, thanks, guys, for, uh, for adding and let me, letting me know. I want to share a, a story with you. I want to share a story with you about a young lady whose name is Camille, all right? And Camille has a goal. Uh, she has a goal that she wants to reach, and she wants to reach that goal by the end of this year. And Camille's goal is to go to Paris, all right? So that's her goal. She wants to go to Paris. So Camille sets a plan in place so that she can reach her goal. So the first thing that she does, we know that she wants to achieve this goal by the end of the year, but she takes a look at her calendar and she sets a specific date by which she wants to achieve her goal of going to Paris, all right? Great goal. Paris is a great place, great city. And as, as uh, the first thing that she'll do in her plan 
uh, she's going to get an airline ticket so that she can get there. Obviously, she's, she's got to get there. So her plan is to go out to orbits.com and purchase an airline ticket to Paris. All right, that's the first thing in her plan. Uh, the second thing in her plan is to find a place to stay while she's there. All right, so she goes out to Expedia.com and she makes a hotel reservation for a room in Paris. All right, so she's continuing to plan. And the next thing that she does is get a passport. So obviously when you enter a foreign country, um, you have to have a passport. So she makes plans to get her passport. And then the last thing that she does as part of her plan is to purchase some luggage, right? So she's got to have something to put her clothes in while she's away, so she gets some new luggage. All right, so you know what, guys? Camille did a great job at creating a plan for her to reach her goal of going to Paris. But you know what, guys? She didn't act on her goal. So as a result, she didn't make it. So she had a great plan. She had a great goal, but she didn't act on it. So, you know, it's cliche, but the, the best of plans have no meaning if we don't act on them. So here's where we're going to focus today so that we don't do the same thing that Camille did. We're going to be spending some time talking about professional development planning and professional development goals, but we're also team going to be talking about how we can make those plans and those goals actionable. It's what I like to call one of those rubber hits the road moments. And so that's where we're going to focus. We're going to take a look at planning, but we're also going to take a look at what's going to make that plan actionable. All right? So here's where our focus will be for today. We're going to be focusing in on five areas, and the first thing that we're going to do is talk about performance objectives and professional development goals. We spent a little bit of time talking about that earlier this year, but I want to revisit it very briefly for those of you who are in our Performance Management Made Easy program this past February. Uh, the second thing that we'll focus on is looking at five easy steps for professional development planning. We're going to make it easy. We're going to make it simple for you. Uh, the next thing we'll take a look at, is some examples of what professional development goals look like and what sits behind that to make it actionable so that it means something so that you can do it. Fourth thing we'll do is take a look at some recommendations and some guidance for having development and career discussions. And then the last thing that we'll do is examine and explore some resources that support the professional development planning process. All right? So, First thing that we're going to focus on today is performance objectives and professional development goals. So here's another way in which I would like to get some feedback from you. What I'm going to do, and be taking a look at the, uh, the panel that's over to the far right, what I'm going to do is share with you a poll question. And just give me a moment here. I'm going to open this up for you. All right. So what you should see in the panel are, or rather is, a polling question. So I'm going to highly invite and encourage you to answer that polling question. It's asking you about the difference between a performance objective and a professional development goal. Are they the same or aren't they? So I'll tell you guys, I got 42 people participating in the program today. That's great. I love it. Um, and I want to get feedback from everyone so I can see now where there are 24 people who haven't answered the polling question yet. So what I want to do is give everyone an opportunity to answer, and then I'm going to share the results with you so that you can see where your thoughts are and what each other thinks in terms of there being a difference between the two or not. All right, so I got six people left. Come on, you six, if you're multitasking, come back to me. Don't leave me. <laughs> All right, so we got two people left. I'm going to give those two people four seconds to join in. Four, three, two, and one. All right, team. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll, and I'm going to share the results with you so that you can see what each other has to say. So the largest percent of you believe that there is a difference between performance objectives and professional development goals, and you are absolutely correct. That's great. Give yourselves a, a pat on the back, all right? So let's just take a look at this very quickly because I want to make sure that for those of you who weren't 
um, sure about the difference between the two or just didn't answer at all. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page before we dive in and talk about professional development goals. So here's how you want to think about it. A performance objective is something that's really focused on helping the business achieve its goals. And we're always about growth. Um, we're always about moving the business forward. So one of the ways that you can think about a performance objective is that it is those things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, those specific projects and those tasks and those initiatives that you're working on that is going to help propel or move the business forward. So performance objectives are all about the business, all right? Here's how you can take a look at or here's how you can be thinking about development goals, professional development goals. Professional development goals are solely focused on you. It's all about your own personal capability or it's about your own skill or your behavior. When you think about professional development and development goals, you're thinking about those things that you're going to do that will strengthen you in your current role or maybe strengthen you for a future role. All right, so again, when you're thinking about professional development, it's all about you and it's all about your own personal capability. So if we compare the two side by side, I believe this will help to giving you further difference between the two of them. Performance objectives focus on the business. Development goals focus on you. And this is one of those times where it's all right to say, hey, it's all about me, all right? So when you think about your development goals, think about those things that are focusing on you, improving your own personal capability, improving your own knowledge, or improving your own skill. And this, uh, this next slide just reinforces and, and states the same thing. It's all about you getting stronger. It's all about you getting better um, in your profession, in your career, and in your role. So, again, professional development is all about you. And that's where we're going to be focusing today, team. It's all about you guys, and that's where we're going to be focusing today. All right? So now let's talk about five easy steps. So quite often, People think that professional development has to be difficult. Um, people think that professional development is cumbersome and it's hard, um, but it doesn't have to be. And so what we're going to do today is help you be thinking about professional development for your short-term and or your long-term career goals. And so I'm going to ask you to use the chat feature again um, because I'm curious to hear from you. And this is how we talk to each other in a virtual format. If you have a long-term goal, let me know. Use the chat feature and just say, I have a short-term goal. And if you have a long-term career goal, use the chat feature and let me know and just say, I have a long-term career goal. If you don't have either, that's okay. I want to know. Um, it's okay if you don't because I'm hoping that today will help get you there. So, again, see, let me hear from you. Use the chat feature um, and let me know whether or not you have a short-term, a long-term, or if you don't have either. And, again, if you don't have one or if you don't have either, it, it's okay. It's okay because I believe that together we're going to get you there, all right? So just use the chat feature um, and let me know where you are with yours. All right. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Kristen. Love it. Thank you, Georgette. Appreciate you letting me know. Uh, Heather, thank you also. Ashley, thanks for chiming in. Drew, hey, man, thanks for chiming in. All right. Uh, Patrick, thank you, too. Appreciate it. All right. Again, team, I appreciate you talking to me with the chat. It helps me. It, it makes me feel as though I'm actually right there with you. So I appreciate your, your participation. So there's five easy steps, all right? I'm going to let you know what those five easy steps are, and then I'm going to show you how we actually make them uh, usable, all right? So here's the first step. Identify your goal, all right? So what is it that you want to accomplish in terms of strengthening your capability improving your capability, um, what new skill do you want to acquire, what behavior do you want to build or change, all right? So that's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to identify what your goal is. Second thing that you're going to do, and I dare say this is probably one of the most important steps as part of the five steps, you want to determine the difference it's going to make. And that's where we talk about performance impact because professional development that doesn't make a difference on your performance is really meaningless, all right? So you want to be thinking about, what difference professional development is going to make on your performance or your capability. The third thing that you want to be thinking about is the plan, requiring a new skill or a new behavior. And this is just as important as step number two. This is where you're thinking about how are you going to achieve and 
how are you going to get the new knowledge and how are you going to get the new skills, all right? Um, number four, the fourth step. You want to be thinking about um, how you're going to implement or integrate what you have learned on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's all about applying what you've learned. And then the fifth thing here is you want to find a way in which you can measure the difference that performance has made in, or rather the difference that professional development has made in your performance on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, team? So I'm going to go over each one of these five steps um, and show you and give you some examples of what they look like. But before I do that, I just want to do a quick check-in. I want to make sure that there aren't any problems with what you're hearing me say and what you're seeing on the slide. Um, so use the chat feature again. If everything is okay, just type in okay. All right? This is my way of checking in with you. All right. So I'm getting a lot of okays. That's good. All right. So it looks as though I am syncing my narration with the slide. All right. That's good to hear. All right. Let's keep it going. Thanks for that feedback. All right. So step number one, what's the goal? All right. So this is where we talk about why are you engaging in professional development? What is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to achieve? All right. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? So with step number one, when you're thinking about the goal, this is where you're thinking about, do I want to develop a new skill? Um, do I want to develop a new behavior? Am I working on something, or do I want to work on something that I'm already good at? Um, do I want to focus on something where I know I need to do a better job? Is your professional development goal focused on your current role, um, or is your development goal focused on a future role. So those are the things that you want to be thinking about as part of step one when you're asking yourself, what's the goal? What's the goal for professional development, all right? The other thing that you can be thinking about as you're thinking about your professional development goal is whether or not that professional development goal is going to help you achieve one of your performance objectives. And we know that performance objectives are those things that you're focused on and accountable for delivering that are helping with business goals. So then the question is, does your professional development goal help you achieve a performance objective? And I'm going to show you an example of what that looks like shortly. All right. Step number two, what is the impact on performance team? This is, again, one of those things that I think is critically important. It's all about making a difference on your performance, right? It's all about empowering you and strengthening you to work smarter or uh, work faster or to be more efficient. So when you're thinking about the impact, when you're thinking about step number two, you want to be thinking about the difference that it's going to make on your capability or you want to be thinking about the difference it's going to make on you being able to do your job more efficiently, more productively, or even faster. I was going to say fasterly, but that's not a word, all right? Uh, let's take a look at step number three. Step number three, acquiring new skills. What resources are available to you or what resources are you going to use to acquire a new skill? How are you going to learn something new, right? So what I'm showing you here are three very traditional ways of acquiring new skills. Nothing wrong with either of these three ways. These are tried and true when they all work. So you can think about traditional classroom, uh, instructor-led. You can even think about virtual classroom, which is really what we're doing today. Um, Self-paced study, which is things like online learning or e-learning courses. Other ways in which you can learn something new is with coaching and mentoring, all right? Again, all three of these are great, but these are not the only three ways that you can learn something new, all right? So here is where I'm going to give you the opportunity to learn from one another. Use the chat feature. Let me know whatever, what, what other thoughts and ideas you have about different ways in which you can learn something new, all right? And as you share with me what your thoughts and ideas are about things that you can do to learn something new, I'm going to share that, and I'm going to read them out loud because I know that you guys have some good ideas. So use the chat feature. And let me know what ideas you have about different ways in which you can learn and do something new. All right. So Jamie is saying go to an industry conference. Yep, absolutely. Drew 
hey, Drew, I like your idea, trial and error. That's exactly right. You learn a lot from my mistakes. Uh, let's see. Diane is saying, show, shadowing someone who has that skill. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, somebody said YouTube. Yes. Yes. Don't forget about YouTube. Uh, let's see. What else are we? Immersion. Yep. Immersion is when you're actually, um, you know, getting yourself involved in whatever it is that you want to learn about, deliberately being, um, you know, part of that. Um, someone else is recommending Google. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't undermine or underestimate what Google can do just in terms of being a learning resource. You can just Google up the topic and learn all about it. George, I love you, man. You recommended learning work. Absolutely. A shameless plug. I didn't ask George to say that, by the way. All right. You guys are giving us some great ideas. Um, it sounds and looks as though you guys have some alternative ways in which to acquire new learning and, and new thoughts and ideas. So great. I'm happy to hear that. All right, let's keep it going, team. Step number four, um, how are you going to apply the new skill, right? So if you've ever been to a training program or a learning program and you sat there for, I don't know, four to eight hours, you know, and you had one of those kumbaya moments where it was really great to be there and it felt really good, and then you go back to your office and go back to your desk and nothing changes, right? Because you didn't have an opportunity to apply what you learned. So step number four is being very deliberate about thinking how you're going to apply what you've learned because that old cliche comes into play here. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. So step number four is really about you having a definite idea or definite plan for how you're going to apply what you've learned. And this way, the time that you've invested in developing is not in vain, right? It means something. All right. And then the very last step of the five easy steps, how are you going to measure the impact? So how are you going to know whether or not something changed with your performance? How are you going to know whether or not you're better, faster, or smarter? So the measure can be qualitative or it can be quantitative, um, and that's something that you can decide on in terms of what works best. But what you really want to do is just make sure that you have a thought or a plan um, in mind for how you can measure the difference between the two. All right? So let's just review those five easy steps again, and also um, I'm going to be showing you some real-world examples of what these steps look like. So the first step, identify your goal. What is it that you want to accomplish with your professional development? Where are you going to focus in terms of your skill or your capability? The second thing in the five easy steps is identify the difference it's going to make on your performance. Third thing, have a plan in place for what resources you can use to acquire a new skill or to learn something new. And you guys have a lot of great ideas about that. A fourth thing, create a plan for how you're going to apply the new skills. So maybe there's a project that you can work on. Maybe there is an initiative that you can work on or a task that gives you an opportunity to apply what you've learned. And then the last thing, make sure you have um, a way in which you can measure whether or not professional development has made a difference on your performance. All right? The other thing that you can be thinking about as you're thinking about your professional development, as you're thinking about your long-term and your short-term career goals, is whether or not your professional development plan includes an opportunity for you to lend your talent in another one of our Millwood Brown regions. So, again, as you're thinking about long-term career goals, um, maybe even short-term career goals, and you're thinking about your professional development planning and those five easy steps, maybe you can include or be thinking about ways in which you can create an opportunity to lend your talents or to do some work in one of the other regions is as part of more ground. All right, just want to make sure that you keep that in mind as well. Keep, every, keep all your options open. All right, so let's take a look at some examples of everything that I just talked about, all right, because we do have some real-world examples of those five easy steps, and I believe that this is going to help with, uh, with making the connection. One of the things I'd like to do before I go into um, showing you what those examples look like, look like is getting some feedback from you again using a poll, all right? So I'm going to open a poll because I do want to show you some examples, but I want to show you the kinds of examples that you want me to show you, or I want to show you the kinds of examples that you want to see that will be helpful. So what I just put up in the screen as a polling question 
is um, is me asking you what types of examples you'd like to see for, for professional development goals, all right? So I see where we have about 25 people who haven't let me know what you'd like to see, all right? All right, come on, come on, you laggers. If you're multitasking, come back, come back. This is all about you. This is your time. This is, this is where you can let me know what you need, all right? You only got three people left. Perfect. Again, maybe it's the same last three people from last time. I'm going to give you three seconds to let me know what type of professional development examples you want to see. Three, two, and one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll, and then I'm going to share with you the results. Um, what I'll share with you before I share the results is that it looks as though the largest percent of you want to see examples of professional development goals for current role, for future role, and a professional development goal that is linked to a performance objective. So I just shared the results with you so that you can see um, what they are. And here's the good news, team. Here's the good news. All right, hold on to your hat. Here are the examples that I'm going to show to you. I'm going to show you an example of a professional development goal for a current role, for a uh, link to a performance objective, and for a future role. So you're in luck. I'm going, to, I'm going to please everybody by giving everybody what they ask for. All right. So here's where we're going to make it easy, and here's where we're going to make it simple. If you're multitasking, I invite encourage you to come back because you don't want to miss this. Here's how I'm going to show you how easy it is. All right. So here's an example of a professional development goal for a current goal. Step number one, identify the goal. So in this example, the goal is being better at using storytelling as a skill to influence our clients, all right? So the goal is developing storytelling skills. That's step number one. Step number two, identify the difference the development of this goal is going to make. So here we can see the difference it will make is having increased credibility and influence with the client, all right? So that's the performance impact. The third step is identifying what resources you're going to use to learn about the skill where you're focusing as part of your professional development goal. So for this person, um, he's going to attend a class, uh, take a couple of e-learning courses in learning works. Um, and also get a little rehearsal, um, a little practice time by presenting to the team for feedback on where he can do better and where he's already doing well, all right? So how is this person going to apply what they've learned, right? They're going to present to the client. They're going to present on two separate occasions to two different clients. So, again, we talked earlier about those times where you – engage in learning and professional development and you aren't deliberate about having a plan for how you're going to apply it, well, this is an example of where a person is very deliberate in saying and planning for how he's going to make his development actionable. And then the last thing is getting some feedback. Um, and feedback is important because it helps you measure the extent to which there's a change of performance or not. Guess what, guys? This is it. This is the five easy steps. What you're looking at is an actionable, meaningful development plan. It doesn't have to be more complicated than this. You'll remember that I said earlier, um, we want to focus on making it easy. We want to make it, uh, make it actionable. And your professional development goal or goal doesn't have to be more complicated than this. All right? I'm going to show you another example just to continue to show you how easy it is. So one of the other things that you said you wanted to see was an example of a professional development goal linked to a performance objective. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm just going to grab a little water here. All right. So here's the performance objective. And if you'll note, and for those of you who were with me this February, this performance objective is smart. It's specific. It's measurable. It's attainable. It's relevant. And it's time-bound. All right? So this is the performance objective. This is what this person will be held accountable for delivering as part of the performance year. All right. So what's the professional development goal? The professional development goal is 
students learning how to use more advanced features in Microsoft Excel. And this is directly related to the performance objective because in the performance objective, this person is responsible and being held accountable for delivering and creating an automated spreadsheet. All right? So that's the goal, step number one. But step number two, you guys remember, is the performance impact. What difference is acquiring this new skill going to make on this person's performance? And here we can see in this example that it's going to give this person an opportunity to work faster. All right? So it's going to have an impact on process time and efficiency. All right? So that's the performance impact. Step number three, what resources is this person going to use to learn about the skill that they want to build? This person is going to go to LearningWorks, a shameless plug, <laughs> and take some courses that are there. Also going to use YouTube and going to use Google as well. And some of you recommended that earlier when we talked about learning resources. Fourth step, how are you going to apply what you've learned? And again, here's where there's that, that direct link to the performance objective. This person is going to create the automated spreadsheet for the client. Um, and again, this links directly back. Just want to pause there for a moment because a lot of people ask me, they say, Kevin, I don't have time for professional development. How do I link what I'm already doing to an opportunity for me to grow and learn? Team, this is a perfect example. This professional development plan is not incremental to what the person is already doing, but is rather a part of his or her role and already a part of uh, the performance objective for the year. All right, so that's step number four. Very last step is measuring the impact. So here we can see where this person is going to compare the amount of time it took prior to learning those new things to create the spreadsheet um, and compare that to how long it takes after um, he's acquired those new skills. So I'm going to go back here again so we can't stress this enough. It doesn't have to be more complicated than this. This is an example of how you integrate a performance objective with a professional development goal. All right? So use the raise your hand feature. If you go back to the panel um, over to the far right, you'll see where there's a little button that says raise your hand. Um, if this example of showing you how to link a performance objective to a professional development goal was helpful, just raise your hand. Let me know. All right? All right. All right, so Alexa, that was helpful for you, and that was helpful for you. All right, cool. Again, just use that little raise your hand feature there. Okay, I'm seeing people raise their hand. Thank you for that feedback. Let's take a look at another example, because you said you wanted to see it, so I got it for you. You said that you wanted to see an example of a development goal for a future role or a career aspiration. So here's an example. This particular person has a goal of building capability for leadership. So I suspect that this person wants to lead people in teams to be a manager or a supervisor. And in developing uh, this particular skill capability, this person will be able to, or the performance impact is, this person will be able to lead and manage uh, people in teams for high performance. Right? That's a great goal, and that's great impact on that person's capability. What is this person going to use? Well, this person is going to leverage the new manager curriculum and learning works. Shameless plug again. <laughs> uh, is going to be taking the coaching for a performance course, subscribing to a magazine, and also listening to some podcasts. Podcasts are a great learning resource, and so this person is going to be leveraging that as well. How is this person going to apply what they've learned about leadership this person's manager has created an opportunity for him to lead a project across business units, kind of working in a matrix-like uh, fashion. And so this is where that person will get an opportunity to practice and the person is learned about leadership. And then impact, or rather measure, I'm sorry, the measure. How are you going to determine whether or not professional development has made a difference? So this person is going to get some feedback from the manager, feedback from the team, and also use a leadership survey as well. All right? Again, guys, take a look at this. It's not that hard. <laughs> the goal is to make it simple. This is an example of a professional development plan, a professional development goal, using the five easy steps. All right? I'm hoping that this helps. 
um, and I'm going to be sending to you a link that recaptures um, and summarizes the five easy steps as well so that you'll have that handy for you, all right? So here's what I quite often hear people say, as I said earlier, when it comes to learning and professional development. I don't have time for learning, Kevin. I don't have time for professional development, Kevin. I just don't have time on my day. What can I do? <laughs> All right, that's what I hear people say. Well, I got a couple of ideas, and I'm going to share those ideas with you. Um, the first idea that I have is to reserve time on your calendar to make it happen. So if you put it on Outlook, you know, it's just time that no one else can grab from you. And actually, it's what I do. Um, what I do is, or rather what I've done or what I'm doing, I have reserved 30 minutes a week on my Outlook calendar for me to read a magazine, uh, listen to a podcast, read a white paper, or take an e-learning course. So that's 30 minutes a week that I do that. It's on my calendar. No one can touch it. And 30 minutes a week means two hours a month. All right? So there's two hours a month where I'm focused on my own professional development. And two hours a month equals, what, 24 hours a year, which equals – three days a year. So for me, three days a year, I have set aside time for my own professional development. I recommend that you do the same. Um, maybe for you it's 15 minutes a week. I don't know. But the idea here is that you be deliberate, that you carve out time on your calendar, and that you commit to making it happen. Another idea is what I like to call team study days, all right? And this can be done by either a manager or an employee. Here's the idea. If you're a manager, maybe you can set aside an hour a month, all right, where you reserve a conference room and you ask your team to bring their laptop with them and you give them study time, if you will, where they can pursue their own learning resources and where they have that one hour committed time once a month in the conference room together to either take a course, read an article, go to YouTube, um, listen to a podcast, those things that we talked about. So if you're a manager, that's a great way for you to fulfill your commitment to supporting your team's time for professional development. If you're an employee, then my recommendation is that you take that idea to your manager, all right? Again, it's all about scheduling time to make it happen, but it's also about committing to the time that you schedule. And so, again, you know, maybe it's an hour a month. I don't know. Maybe it's a half, a half hour a month. But the goal and the idea, again, is that you just set aside some time to make it happen. So I'm curious to hear from you. Um, use the chat feature again. What thoughts and ideas do you have about ways in which you can set aside time for learning and development? I'm really curious to get your ideas. I don't have all the answers. More often than not, you have more answers than me. So as you share your thoughts and ideas about what you can do to make time for learning and development, I am going to share your good thoughts and ideas with everyone else. So again, use the chat feature. Let me know what thoughts and ideas you have about making time for learning. All right? All right. Come on, team. Let me know. What are your thoughts? All right. So someone said, Hey, have some one-on-one -on -one learning time with a coworker. That's cool. All right. Hey, somebody said lunch and learn session. That's great. Uh, someone else said during your lunch hour, take a look at what's on the greenhouse. All right. Oh, and Drew is recommending that you sign up for, or rather that you sign up for a weekly or a daily newsletter. Great idea, Drew. Uh, let's see what else. Someone else says they really like the idea, and that's actually from Lindsay. Says really like the idea of setting aside 30 minutes a week. Yep. All right. If you got some more ideas about what you can do to set aside time for learning, keep them coming, and I'll keep sharing. All right. All right. Looks as though we're pretty quiet now, <laughs> so let's keep going. All right. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and ideas. I'm hoping that the uh, couple of ideas that I've shared with you um, from my own experience and what I read from you from what everyone else is thinking um, will help as well. All right. So now let's talk about the discussion. The discussion between manager and employees about professional development, career goals, and career aspirations. Excuse me, guys, I'm just going to take another swig of water here. 
All right. So development starts with a conversation. That's the starting point. The conversation starts with you talking to your manager and you sharing with your manager what your career goals are, what your thoughts and aspirations are about your current role, what your thoughts and aspirations are about a future role. It starts with letting your manager know, and it starts with you taking charge by initiating that conversation as a demonstration of you owning your own career. Um, it's cliché. You've heard it a lot. People say it, but it's very true. Uh, don't wait for your manager to tap you on the shoulder to say, hey, you want to talk about your career? Our recommendation, my recommendation, is that you initiate the conversation so that you can get what you need in order to move your career forward, in order to get the feedback that you need in order to grow and learn and develop. So when you're having that conversation, you want to be sharing with your manager what your thoughts are for where you can grow, for where you can learn, for where you can develop. You want to ask questions that will give you some feedback from your manager to say, where do you see me as having the greatest opportunity for career advancement? Where do you see the opportunities for me to develop or to do something different? Or you want to be listening to the feedback that you get because based on that feedback, you'll get uh, an actionable plan or you'll get some thoughts and ideas about how to move forward. And then last but not least, you want to act. Remember, we, we met Camille earlier at the beginning of the program. She had a great plan that she didn't act. So I just want to make sure that you guys have an opportunity to act. So it really does start with the conversation. Um, and quite often, the conversation is daunting because people don't know where to start, don't know what that conversation looks like, don't know what that conversation sounds like. Guess what, guys? I got an answer for you. Take a look at the chat window. And, again, I shared with you earlier that you're going to need access to the greenhouse, um, and, and this is where you're going to need it. I just sent you a link. I sent you a link to a discussion guide for employees that will help you have the conversation with your manager about your professional development, all right? I'm about to send you another link to another discussion guide. That's a link the one that I just said, is a link to a discussion guide for managers. So I just sent you two links. I'm going to ask, invite, encourage you to go out and take a look at those two links that I just sent to you. Again, there's one link for a career discussion guide for employees and another link for a career discussion guide for managers. So I'm actually inviting and asking you to multitask about using those links to go out to the greenhouse and taking a look at those two discussion guides, all right? As you're looking at those discussion guides, you'll see where we've given you some conversation starters. We've given you some thoughts and ideas about how to initiate the discussion, how to get the discussion started. Um, and I want to underline get the discussion started because it's not meant to be the entire conversation, but rather it's meant to help you get it started because we know that quite often it's a challenge just to, you know, to even begin uh, having that discussion. So what we've done here um, in, in those discussion guides is give you some thoughts and ideas. It doesn't have to be word for word verbatim. You can adapt it so that it uses your own language and your own style, but the spirit of getting the conversation started and what you'll want to say and respond to is there as well. So that's a resource for both managers and employees. I'm hoping that that is helpful, all right? So now um, we talked about five easy steps. I've already started uh, sharing you some thoughts and ideas about how to make professional development planning actionable. Um, I've already given you a couple of resources. Um, what we're going to do next is take a virtual field trip, all right? So I know that you guys are looking at those two documents that I shared with you, but I'm going to need you to come back to the webcast. Come back, come back, don't leave me, because uh, we're all going to go on a virtual field trip together. Um, I have everyone's permission slip, so everyone has permission to go on this field trip with me. And for the place that we're going to go together, I'm going to send you another link, and I'm going to send you that link via the chat window here. Um, so if you'll come back to the WebEx and take a look at the link that I just sent to you, 
and then go ahead and open and select that link. When you open and select that link, you'll see where it takes you to the learning and performance greenhouse, all right? The learning and performance greenhouse. Some of you may have been here already. Some of you may have not. Um, we recently redesigned the learning performance greenhouse page so that it is a bit more user-friendly and so that resources are easier to find. As you're looking at the learning and performance greenhouse, I want to direct your attention over to the right where you'll see a section for professional development planning, all right, professional development planning or professional development. You'll see where there are some resources there to help you with that. Um, and while you're here and just kind of perusing through the learning performance greenhouse, I'd like to give you a challenge, all right? I'm going to invite and encourage everyone to participate in this challenge. So if you come back to the WebEx, you'll see where I have a slide up that shows you the challenge. And I want to see who can answer this question first, all right? You'll need to use the Learning and Performance Greenhouse to answer this question, but just come back to the web, WebEx just for a moment so that you can see what the challenge is. So here's the challenge. And I'm going to put emphasis on certain words to kind of help you <laughs> figure it out, all right? Here's the challenge. How many learning solutions are there for having difficult conversations, right? That's the challenge. If you can tell me how many there are, use the chat window. Um, and if you're the first person to let me know, uh, I'll give you a prize. How about that? <laughs> All right. So here is the challenge. Here is the challenge. How many learning solutions are there for having difficult conversations? You'll find the answer on the learning and performance greenhouse. I'm going to read the question again and I'm going to place emphasis on certain words to make it easier for you to, to meet this challenge. How many learning solutions are there for having difficult conversations? All right. And I'll give you a few more seconds to answer that question. All right. I see some answers coming in, some of which are correct some of which are not. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to read it one more time, and I'll give you guys the answer. I won't put you in, in, in torture anymore. How many learning solutions are there for having difficult conversations? All right. So, Drew Myers, congratulations, sir. You got it right, and you got it right first. There are three learning solutions for having difficult conversations. Here's how Drew got out that answer, all right? So if you select the Learning Solutions Catalog or the Self-Paced Learning Solutions link that's there on the Learning and Performance Greenhouse, if you select that, you'll see in the catalog where if you go to the Table of Contents, You'll see in the table of contents, there's a section for difficult conversations. Again, so you want to go to the learning solutions catalog, the self-paced learning solutions catalog. And then as you take a look at that, you'll see in the table of contents where there's a section for difficult conversations. And you can see where there are three learning solutions that are there available for that. Hey, guys, thank you for indulging in that little challenge. It was just my way of showing you the different types of learning resources that are available to you for your professional development planning. So thank you for participating in that little challenge. All right, all right, guys, we're almost done, um, but there's a couple of things that I'd like to share with you and show you. So I'm just going to ask you to come back to the WebEx. We really need you to come back. All right. If you're back, let me know. Use the chat window and say, I'm back exclamation point, all right? If you're back in the WebEx, use the chat window and let me know you're back by saying, I'm back, <laughs> exclamation point. All right. It, hey, somebody said I'm here. Cool. Glad you're here. Looks like everybody's coming back to me. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. We're almost done. I'm going to keep my commitment of ending um, at the hour. All right, so thank you for coming back. All right, so we have some new professional development planning tools that are available for you in LearningWorks. And it's just going to make those five steps easier that we talked about. 
So the next time that you log into Learning Works or when you go into Learning Works or when you're ready to create your professional development plan, at the login page, select My Development, and that will take you directly to the professional development planning section. Again, this tool is going to make it easier for you to create your professional development plan. And there are some advantages to using that tool that I'd like to share with you. The first thing that, um, that you want to be thinking about for why you want to use this tool is that it'll, it'll document your professional development plan, right? So it'll be a place that you can always go back to and reference and take a look at as you're thinking about your professional development plan. Um, your manager can take a look at it, and you can take a look at it. So that helps with that conversation that we were talking about earlier that you want to have with your manager when you're planning for professional development. Um, it keeps a record of your development plan over time. So, for example, two years from now, five years from now, you can go back and see how you've grown or, you know, how you've progressed and where your focus has been for your professional development plan. And then the very last thing, and I really like this, remember those self-paced learning solutions that you just took a look at? You can link those solutions directly to your plan so that you can identify what resources are going to help you achieve your particular professional development goals. So I want to highly encourage and recommend that when you're ready to build your professional development plan, you go out to LearningWorks and that you let LearningWorks help you do that. You can work smarter, not harder, by doing that. The last thing I'd like to share with you, and we talked about this a little bit, is that as you think about your career development and your career goals, your long-term career goals, your short-term career goals, maybe that includes you working in another country or in another region. So there's also a way in LearningWorks that you can let us know whether or not you're interested in pursuing career opportunities in other regions or in other parts of the world. Um, and it's called the mobility preference, and when you log into LearningWorks, you'll see that. Um, so what you have the option to do when you're using this tool is, again, letting us know what your global interests are. Um, it also allows you to support your professional development plans um, for growing your career in other areas. And then the last thing is it just expands your opportunities. Your, uh, your goals and your development doesn't have to be limited to where you are today, right? So, team, I am at the end. Here's the things that we talked about today. We talked about performance objectives and professional development goals and the difference between the two. Um, I shared with you five easy steps for your professional development planning, gave you some examples and how you can make those actionable. Um, we talked about and took a look at the career discussion guides for your professional development planning as well. And then we took a virtual field trip. Um, we went out to the greenhouse and took a look at a few resources that are available for your professional development plan. Hey team, I am really, really, really hoping that the time that I've spent with you today has been helpful. And one of the ways in which you can let me know whether or not it was is by giving me some feedback. Take a look at the chat window, all right? I just sent you a link to a learning evaluation. This is where you can give me some feedback. Let me know what worked today. Let me know what didn't work. And that gives me an opportunity to plan for doing something different going forward. It's an opportunity for improvement. Your voice is important to me and it matters. And I'm going to send you the results of this learning evaluation so that you can see how I can and how we can use this. So it's really important to me, team. I need your feedback. Take a look at the chat window. you see where I sent you a link to a learning evaluation. It will take you no more than two to five minutes. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the feedback that you're going to give me in advance. Thanks for participating in today's program. I look forward to spending more time with you as we deliver more learning and program, more learning and development programs to support your professional development needs. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great weekend and have a great holiday weekend as well. Don't forget to give me feedback. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.